Hi, I'm Mark with Bean Trailer, and we're going to have another one in our continuing series of Between Two Beans. And we're very fortunate to have Rob today from Revere Overland. Is that correct? That Did is I correct. Yeah, Revere Overland. So tell me uh, why Revere Overland? Um, so when I first started my YouTube channel, it was just like Rob's off road. And I was texting one of my colleagues saying, I need something. I need something catchy, you know, it's got to have Overland in the name because that's what everyone has at the time. Right. Um, I realized that was a little naive now, but that was that was a requirement. And he said, you've got to make it something to do with you being British. You know, the British are coming, have something that plays on that. Okay. And I was like, you know what, we'll go with Revere, you know, like Paul Revere, the British are coming. Okay. And, oh, I like it. And, All know, right. So few I was trying to figure out that what one. that was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I know yeah. what it is. I was like. Oh my gosh, I don't understand Revere <laughs> to be a British term no, associated no, with not. overlanding. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of anti-British, but. So, okay, well, we'll, um, the fact that you're British brings up a question for me, but we'll, uh, I'll table that one for a minute. Okay. So, um, how did you get into overlanding? Um, it's actually the same friend that I was texting. Uh, he had a Jeep ages ago and he said, come out in the Jeep, see if you like it. And then about two weeks later, I bought my own. Oh, wow. Because so I apparently you liked it. it. I loved it, yeah. Uh, nice. And then from there, I was watching all these Jeep off-roading videos. It's like, that. I don't know if I really want to do some of the off-road, the really hardcore yeah. wheeling stuff. Uh, and I think like a lot of other people, I was just browsing YouTube videos, and I came across this term overlanding. I was like, that looks like what I want to do. Yeah. And it, it went from there. So when I look at your channel, it, it seems like you started to pick up steam about four or five years ago, four years ago, maybe. Um, I think I first started posting consistently about four or five years okay. ago. Yeah. And, and I'd say it's been successful for the last couple of years. Okay. So how, how long you've been doing this? Uh, about that long. It's basically oh, nice. when I first started doing it, I had this little GoPro stuck the dash yeah. cam up and it was a terrible video. Yeah. I enjoyed what I did and just kept on developing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so how, you know, I, I've never heard, I think I one time read a definition of overlanding, but how would you define overlanding? Um, the way I see it is it's just going to be some kind of self-reliant travel. Uh, you know, you're going out away from everyone. I do it to get away mm -hmm. from the crowds and just see the sights along the way. Uh, I know a lot of people get kind of hooked up on the term, what is and what isn't. I, I just see it as enjoying yourself out in nature in this self-reliant travel. Okay. All right, uh, top three places you've camped, Rob. Oh, you know what, I'd say one of them was where we camped yesterday. Really? It was, uh, I, I wish, Whitmore Canyon, at the end of Whitmore Canyon. So south from St. George, ends right on the Colorado River. Fantastic South spot. of St. George on the Colorado River. Yeah, okay. camp in this, oh, nice. right on the edge. I have to get yeah. you some footage so you can do like uh, B-roll right now showing okay, that spot. Good. Unfortunately, you can't fly the drone there because yeah. it's a national recreation area, but beautiful right. place. Nice. Um, second place, probably just outside of Salt Lake City up in the mountains here. Um, Where? Uh, you know, I don't, it doesn't really have a name. It's just you follow this road, end up at the edge of a cliff. So was it, is it toward the Uintas? It, yeah, so yeah, in the, in the yeah. Uinta Mountains. So like um, uh, Aspen and Pine Tree kind of area? Uh, I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. It's just, yeah. Because yeah. we have a lot of different terrain, right? We have um, what, you know, because Utah in general is a desert, right? So yeah. if you're in Salt Lake City, you know, unless they're, they planted a tree, it's basically scrub oak or yeah. bushes, right? Yeah, um, yes, you go up through, yeah, up through the aspen. Yeah, you, ha you have to get up high elevation to yeah. actually get into the mountains and yeah. get some trees. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely incredible spot up yeah. there. How about the third place? That's tough because there's so many, um, so many places I've stayed here in Utah. I'd say a lot of my favorite places have been here in Utah, but um, third one's probably Last Dollar Pass outside of Telluride. Mm. Yeah. Just, incredible spot up there yeah i haven't i think uh this summer i haven't spent a lot of time in montana or in colorado so this summer one of my goals is to you know yeah. either go up to montana or colorado yeah both beautiful get a lot states. of camping 
yeah. there. Uh, okay. Um, looks like you had a forerunner, and uh, looks like you've traded that in for uh, Tundra. I don't know if you traded it. I haven't. It. No, so it's oh, actually okay. still sitting at home. Oh, okay. Uh, my wife's driving it at the moment, but it is going to be for sale soon. Okay. Uh, switched over to the Tundra that I picked up uh, about two weeks ago. Okay. So why the Tundra? Um, so I wanted something a little newer, a little lower miles, uh, and with a little more power. So I feel like I've reached the limit with the Forerunner with what I can add to it. Um, I've maxed out the, the gross vehicle weight on there, maybe a little more, but okay. don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, and yeah, this will be our little secret. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just wanted something with you know a little more power, a little more space. Yeah. And the Tundra, it's new. I figured it'd be good for the channel. Yeah. Uh, so I went for it. What do you think so far? I love it. Okay. It is, it's fantastic. I know it's a little, you know, people don't like the looks of it, but yeah. in terms of the power it has, the comfort, how smooth it is off-road, like that's thing, that's like driving a Lexus off-road. It's yeah. so nice. Yeah, and I think their off-road systems are pretty sophisticated too. They are, right? yeah, so, they are. Uh, they've made some improvements for sure. Nice. Since the last generation. Okay. Um, so you're getting ready to do so, you've done some upgrades on your, Tundra, I think some lighting ones. Uh, not yet. So oh, I just okay. had it over at Heretic Studio here in Salt Lake City. Um, they are working on some stuff for the lighting. Okay. So I'm hoping they'll have that right. done in the next few weeks. So you probably have a list of things that you're planning on yeah. doing either right away or over time, right? Yeah. So it desperately needs some kind of self recovery. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have tow hooks. I need a winch, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, and then uh, sliders skid plates, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I took, just a few days ago, took this up to uh, Tocqueville Falls. Oh got, yeah. Uh, down near St. George. really cool well. down there. Yeah, um, beautiful spot. The trail's a little bit tough and uh, had no problems at all with it. Yeah, I was about to say, like, it's not, it's not no, tough for that. No, this had no issues <laughs> at all. It was the tundra. Uh, uh, just really, the lack on that of, trail? Yeah, oh, the lack wow. of ground clearance, uh, the long wheelbase. Uh, I took yeah. it really slow, yeah. dragged a couple of times on the bottom. But, uh, yeah. It did it. Hopefully, so I can get I, some pictures and video of that now. I foresee a small lift in your future. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, lift something, I think it's going to take a little bit longer. Yeah. But it definitely needs that, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you told me earlier on that you're British, so uh, why not a Land Rover? <laughs> yeah, I chose Toyota for a reason. <laughs> uh, Land Rover is kind of on the opposite end of that scale. <laughs> so my favorite uh, overlanding vehicle I've ever had is my 2017 Land Rover Discovery Diesel. Oh yeah. Ask me how long it's been in the shop. <laughs> how long has it been in the shop? Two months. Wow. Yeah. Because the parts have to come over from yep. the UK. So yep. eventually I have to hope to get back in it but uh yeah we also have a tacoma that i think has never been in the shop but yeah that doesn't surprise me <laughs> yeah except for routine maintenance right yeah that's how the forerunner has been said yeah. 207 208 thousand miles and nice. i haven't had to do anything to right. it right yeah. land rovers kind of awesome vehicles but i wouldn't want to take one way yeah i wouldn't take one that's not under warranty yeah <laughs> yeah because because if 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 i get close to the warranty expiring it's gone yeah it, but that doesn't help you if you're out like um at the end of whitmore canyon we're 86 miles from st george oh yeah that's true <laughs> Warranty's not gonna help you out <laughs> there true. yeah i never thought about that now you're scaring me <laughs> um all right so when you think about upgrades in a vehicle and with as much experience as you have overlanding what would you say is the most uh, underrated upgrade to an overlanding rig to the vehicle itself underrated to the vehicle that's a tough one so I was looking at your questions I was thinking like equipment you take with you underrated to the vehicle so what so most people do lights they do yeah. some kind of suspension lift they do onboard air they do a lot of different things I don't know about to the vehicle. I, you know what? I'd say draw system. Say that again? Draw system. Okay. <laughs> we got yeah. lots of noise. Right. <laughs> okay. One more time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say? Uh, I think 
probably one of the most underrated things is a draw system. And the oh, only reason I say that I is you. because it took me so long to do a draw system in my Forerunner. And as soon as I put that in and went out on a trip, I, I was wondering how I ever lived without it. Oh, it interesting. Really, yeah, like storage right. is such a big deal when you've got all the stuff yeah. you're taking with you. And I had plastic yeah. totes stacked up in the back and going to a draw system, everything has its place. Right. Everything's easy to find. It's, it's worth doing. Okay. All right. Uh, most overrated upgrade to an overlanding rig? <laughs> I've got to think about this one for a second as well. Most overrated. You know, I, it's tough to come up with an answer for the most overrated thing because I think everything I put on my vehicle, I put on for a reason. I do think people do rush towards the lights, which I know is kind of ironic considering that is the first thing I'm putting on yeah. as well. Uh, but the amount of time you use those lights, it's not a lot. Uh, there are certain yeah. things that you could do before then. You know, tires, probably the first thing to do. Right. Uh, I would then, put that in the category of underrated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tires, absolute first right. thing, then rock sliders and right. a winch. But, yeah. but, you know, most people run straight for those lights. Right. I'd say wheels are kind of an overrated, like they look nice and they're yeah. cool. And if you're doing a lot of rock crawling or if you're really airing down a lot, then I can see like wheels being one, but. Um, I could agree with that. I've got, um, on my Forerunner, it still has the stock wheels. Uh, yeah. The Tundra is a little different because it came with 20 inch wheels, uh, which are oh, no yeah. good at all. So yeah, those gotta go. Yeah, those are going, those are, I've got some, I've hopefully got some wheels on the way uh, for okay. that, some seven, 17 or 18 inch wheels. Nice, okay. Um, um, why, okay, so this is a question, and this is a sincere question. Um, why a rooftop tent? Why not just a good ground tent? And let me, let me give you some background yep. on that question. Um, last, o when uh, Nick and I were at the overlanding show in um, Virginia, um, they there were right behind us was this really cool instant like pop up tent. Yeah, like the was gazelle tents. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a gazelle. Yeah. That's what it was. So it was super easy to put up and take down. And I thought, like, to me, tents like are a category if. If you're willing to live with a tent, which means listening to the wind flop around at night, <laughs> yeah. right? Then, you know, I don't know what your bladder's like, but at my age- You have to climb down. And, climbing yeah. down, right? Like, so so, um, so, why a rooftop tent versus a just good ground tent? Um, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a ground tent. I was, yeah. uh, before you said that I could borrow this for the week, yeah. I was about to go out and buy a ground, a, a ground tent. Yeah. Um, a rooftop tent is just easier uh, and a little more comfortable uh, and gives me more options with places I can camp. There have been places, and actually just uh, just last night, again, down at the end of Whitmore Canyon, uh, we were camped out on ancient lava flows, you know, very, very yeah. rocky ground. Right. I don't know if I'd really oh, want to set a tent up there, yeah. and if I did, it'd probably blow away because yeah. I have no way of uh, right. pegging it down. Okay. Uh, and then there have been other places like up on Last Dollar Pass where I mentioned where the ground is leaning off like that. And sure, you can camp in a ground tent on that. Yeah. But with the rooftop tent, all you need to do is drive up onto a rock and I'm level. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is just the speed of setup. I can get something like the eye campers that you've got on here. Right. You can set those up in a minute. Yeah. Take them back down in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, and all your bedding's in there ready to right. go. Yeah. So it, the bedding being in there is it nice, is. right? So it's yeah. part, part of its convenience, part of it's yeah. just being able to camp anywhere you want. Okay. So uh, what'd you think of Black Bean? I loved it. I'm yeah. so glad that I was able to use this for the last few days. So comfortable. Um, you know, the heat in there, even yeah. though we're in Southern Utah, it still was cold overnight. Yeah. So it's really nice having the heat. Uh, kitchen set up in the back. Yeah. Uh, you know, great. Just pull that out, cook dinner on it. And I don't, I don't make fancy meals, but yeah. it's still easier than getting everything else out. Um, and I think the best thing was that it's just like I put the vehicle in park, it's ready. Yeah. When I want to leave in the morning, <laughs> shift into drive, I go. You yeah. know, there's no, no setup time at all, um, right. like with the rooftop tents. And 
it handled so well on the trails. Yeah. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I hope you can show some of the footage of you know the speeds we're going on some of these dirt roads and some of the places we went because like I say it, it outperformed yeah. the tundra on the tough stuff and just didn't even know it was there on on the washboards. Oh, nice. So, um, what kind of night, night of sleep did you get in it? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. As with a as with a friend, and he's in a rooftop tent. You know, he's he's out there worrying about the wind on this cliff top with great views. He's worrying about the wind, and I'm just like, well, I'll close the door, make sure the vents are shut, and yeah. turn on the heat. We actually ended up sitting in there and working a little bit. Oh, nice. Oh, night. so you set up the table? Yeah, and, I set up the table oh, cool. in the middle, sat and worked for a little oh, bit. Oh, nice. You know, it was cold. You're like, get in there, we'll just turn on the heat. Yeah. That, that to me, is uh, probably the thing that I love the most about Bean is um, I wanted to design something that was a super comfortable space to sleep. Yeah. Right? Because when I think of camping, I think of tent camping when i think of tent capping i think of progressively getting worse and worse nights sleep <laughs> because i because the wind is yeah. blowing or i wake up and i'm cold or whatever and yeah what i love about being is that like i think i sleep better in being than i do at my house right yeah. you know it's just a really comfortable sleeping space. oh yeah it really is yeah, yeah. like yeah. mattress in there i don't know how thick that is but it's a great mattress um so so now that you've experienced being who do you think, um, I'm curious to, to know who you think Bean is for. In other words, like, what? who do you see as, like, the customer for a black man? Um Which is the trailer you took out. I, I can see several several categories of people. I think this is something my wife and I are probably going to end up with something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I want something that's going to go off-road, go out to these remote places with no problems at all yeah. um, and she wants somewhere where she can sit and she can work and be warm because right. she works remotely yeah. uh, that way we can both sit in there and work um, I also see it being great for a really adventurous couple uh, who maybe want to go out for weekends week-long trips uh, not necessarily working along the way but you yeah. know you got places you can put bikes up on there right. uh, you can put kayaks on the roof right. so you know you can take all of your gear with you yeah. um, and then I think families as well you know i can see like a family of four or five yeah. and sure it looks like a small trailer yeah but when you put that rooftop tent on you suddenly yeah. got room for another two or yeah. three people up there yeah especially the eye camp you know yeah when that eye camper opens up it's actually bigger than the inside of bean right? yeah yeah it's a king size, king size, king size yeah. bed where that's a queen i mean it's still pretty big but yeah um yeah um okay so, uh, what? Uh, anything else you liked about being? So I think this is not something I really used on this this trip, but all the storage in there. Okay. Uh, you know, if I was taking out for a much longer trip, you have storage for days. In here. Yeah. You know, you got the you got the battery box on this side, yeah. but then you got storage tray on the other side. You can right. load stuff in. Um, you got those cabinets above the kitchen, so right. you can load those up with food. I like that you can get to those from the inside yeah. as well, so you can put midnight snack. Up there. Yeah, midnight <laughs> snack or something you might need on the inside. Yeah. I actually end up putting all my camera equipment in there because the yeah, when the batteries get cold, they don't yeah. work. So I was yeah, keeping them true. warm in there. Yeah. Um, you know, and drawers. You know, I talked yeah. about the drawers in the forerunner. You got the drawers in the kitchen in the back there. So I think it's just the storage. So I know you're familiar with Red Arc. Um, what did you think of the Manager 30 system as a match for the trailer? I think it's a great match. That's that's something I've got in my vehicle as well. Uh, you know, it's something that does everything you need to do. Uh, you know, you can plug it into the wall. So if you've got this trailer sitting at home, you can plug it in, charge those batteries before you leave, or just keep them maintained. Yeah. Uh, great for the life of the battery. Uh, obviously, you've got the solar panel right. sitting on the front there, so it was yeah. charging from that. Uh, nice. I didn't actually take it off. I know it is removable, right. um, and it still charged even when it wasn't pointing oh, nice. directly at the sun. Um, and then I know that it charges from the vehicle as well. So right. you got, yeah. you know, I think it's a great match. And this thing has so much power in it. Yeah, was yeah. it 420 like, amp hours in yeah, this one? Half of a Tesla Powerwall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so. more than you'd ever need. Yeah. Oh, um, you can keep, it okay. Can, it can keep you going for I, rather than more than ever you yeah. need. It's uh, something that could keep you going in one location for a really long time yeah true yeah. so what uh what suggestions for improvement to being you know with your uh overlanding experience what would you recommend in terms of improvement you know um 
for me, it's just, it really, it did the job. It did exactly okay. what I wanted it to do. There were maybe a couple of small things that I'd add to it, just small accessories. And these are things that if I bought this, I could easily get myself. Um, something like a trash bag holder. Oh yeah. Somewhere to put the trash. Yeah. Um, I know you're a big trash a guy. Yeah, so I, I I have one on the floor right now. I love oh, having yeah. the trash out there, and I, I load that up with uh, yeah. firewood, that kind of thing, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just somewhere to put a trash bag okay. and somewhere to put your shoes, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are good suggestions. Yeah. Okay, so we've designed a series of questions. These are... Uh, carefully curated questions oh, yeah. <laughs> that reveal the true overlander is this like the what kind of disney princess are you <laughs> <laughs> i don't maybe i'm not familiar <laughs> no it's like those quizzes you do on facebook <laughs> yeah um all right are you ready for this uh, i'm ready okay deep breath I'm a little nervous now okay uh shower frequently or when your wife can't stand you anymore frequently every couple of days okay. uh, that is something I love taking with me as a shower okay um, axe or saw got to pick one you can't I can't say both nope okay how about it depends where I'm going okay. uh, around here an axe will do the job just fine if I'm going up to like the Pacific Northwest or up into Idaho Montana it's taking a chainsaw okay uh, your rig can be observed in a hotel parking lot frequently, <laughs> occasionally, or never. I, I don't, if anyone asks, I never in a hotel, except for last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so, will, I will say, so I hate staying at hotels because I hate spending money when I could camp for free. Yeah. But sometimes you've got to. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you need to reset everything you need that warm night. You need that hot shower that goes constantly. If you've got kids with you or a wife with you or a partner with you, sometimes it's nice just to have that right. little bit of extra space yeah. in a hotel room. Uh, Cindy and I like to travel. We like to travel with Bean, but we also like to travel without Bean, you know, and stay in hotels. Yeah. And uh, we frequently comment and laugh about how many really cool how overlanding rigs, rigs we see in the parking yeah. lot of hotels yeah i usually i'd say you know if i'm on a two three week trip i'll probably stay a couple of nights at okay. a hotel sometimes maybe it's just on the way there right. or on the way back yeah um, i'll just in the middle i need something okay rv park yes or no uh no unless i've got to do laundry okay <laughs> and that's another thing like maybe stay at a campground once or twice a trip just to do laundry okay is overland is overlanding fun for both you and your wife mainly me <laughs> she does enjoy she enjoys going out and seeing the sights okay you know she's not about sitting in the vehicle off-roading for days on night yeah she likes going out and seeing seeing the beauty of nature yeah then i think i'm going to know the answer to this next question is rock crawling fun for you and your wife uh I think she enjoys it more than I do. Really? <laughs> yes, because she's not scared about tearing the vehicle up. <laughs> I I like the goal aspect of rock climbing, mm -hmm. of rock crawling. Yeah. I don't like the kidney bruises oh, associated yeah. with rock crawling. Right? Yeah. Like, like I, I want, I, you know, if there's like, like if we're in Moab and we're going to do fins and things, I like to say, okay, I picked good lines and we yeah. got... But the actual experience, I'm, if I'm going to be honest about it, I'm not super digging it, yeah. and neither is my wife. <laughs> that's that's funny. I, my wife was really pumped about doing Hell's Revenge. Yeah. She the, the fact that she did it, I feel like she you know she achieved that goal. She really enjoyed that. Wow. I, so you you did Hell's Revenge in the in the four runner, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she did it. Did she? Okay. Well, here's the true test. Did she bail out on you at all? No, she did the whole thing. Oh, she drove right from, the whole she thing. She drove the whole wow. thing from the start. Did you end. bail out on her? Yeah, you're like, oh, hey, honey, I, I got to get good <laughs> yeah, footage I gotta here. I got to get out here. <laughs> this is really steep. It looked great on camera. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, on numerous occasions, has said, oh, hell no, and <laughs> gotten out, out and yeah. said, I'm going to film it. <laughs> <laughs> now, my wife's the driver a lot of the time. So oh, really? I can do oh, the interesting. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, movie or streaming 
while overlanding, yes or no? Nope. No. Purist. No, I don't, I don't really watch a lot of movies or YouTube. It's funny, I, I make stuff for YouTube. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of it. Right. Um, usually I just kind of go to bed early and I just hang out or I'm sitting there taking a time lapse, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Transferring footage across. Nice. So, yeah. Got other things to do. Uh, overlanding with daytime temperatures below 40 degrees, yes or no? Um, no, no, I like to go yeah. south in the winter. Like I'll do yeah. it, but I'd yeah. go south. One of the hard, one, one of the hardest things for me to admit, you know, because you want to like think you're really a tough guy, <laughs> but I think I've learned in the last couple of years, if the daytime temperatures are going to be below 40 degrees, it's the nighttime. I'm, I, I'm not gonna do it. I don't yeah. care how cold it gets at night. Oh, see, that's I, me. I, oh, really? I, I don't care about the daytime temperatures because uh, I'm in the vehicle. Uh, it's yeah. when you get to camp at night, cooking. Oh yeah. You know, if I'm cooking and it's like 10 degrees out yeah. and it's windy, yeah. that's miserable. Yeah. I've got a heater for the tent, so I don't care right. about that side of things. It's, right. just, it's just hanging out at camp and cold. Yeah. So we, we try and go south. Okay, good, all right. Um, all right, one last question. Being t-shirt, hat, or mug? You mean I gotta pick one again? Yeah. <laughs> t-shirt. T-shirt, okay. All right, well, th that wraps it up. I don't have any more questions. Do you have any uh, questions for me? No, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I really appreciate you letting me use this. It oh. made my week a lot more comfortable. Oh, I'm glad you had a really good experience with it. Yeah, uh, I certainly did. Thanks. Uh, do you want to tell the folk, the eight people that are on our channel watching this <laughs> um, what your uh, YouTube channel is and talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, and, I'm, I'm and Rob. Point them to, to it. Uh, I'm Rob. My channel is Revere Overland. Just search for it. I'd love to get some more uh, people on Instagram as well, so check that out too. And uh, you can see what we got up to with the Bean Trailer over the last few days. Yeah. As always, if you like what you see, Press that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thanks, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Five. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, you can do a pretty good donut at 35. Yeah, I guess you could. <laughs>